Hey guys, it's Trevor coming to you with another video, and today we are going to be talking about how you can build your own custom exception class in PowerShell. So what we're going to be doing is starting with the Microsoft uh, System.Exception class, which is kind of the base class that's used to declare different types of exceptions. And we're going to extend this class into our own custom exception class in PowerShell. Now, you might ask, well, why do I want to do this? Well, when you're developing a PowerShell application or an application in any language, really, you sometimes want to represent certain state about your application that is unique to your application and doesn't fall into one of the standard exception classes that is provided by the .NET base class library. So thanks to PowerShell support for declaring classes, uh, including the ability to inherit from other classes, including the system.exception class that's in .NET, we can actually define our own exception class in PowerShell code. We don't have to fall back to C Sharp in this case. And then we can add our own custom properties that allow us to define some unique state about our application. So I want to just point out the documentation here for the .NET exception class. For starters, it's a pretty basic base class. And I want to call out one thing, which is the constructors here. So we have a constructor that allows us to construct a new exception object with no parameters. And then there's also another constructor override that allows us to declare or to instantiate an exception with a string as the input. And you can notice that when we use the string constructor, it's going to assign that string to the error message on the exception class. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because the message property that's defined on the exception class is actually a read-only property, at least in my testing. I don't necessarily see that here, but in my testing, it, it is actually a read-only property. And so the proper way to set the message on the exception object is to pass it in when the exception is being constructed. So we are going to use that. There's also one more advanced use case that we're probably not going to specifically demonstrate, but you can actually create what's called an inner exception. So if you take a look at the inner exception property down here, you can actually define an exception that caused a higher level exception to occur. And so you can kind of build a chain of uh, interconnected exceptions that occurred in your application. But again, that's a little bit more of an advanced use case. I want to keep this kind of introductory level and just show you how to build a custom error class using system.exception. So, um, so just know that that's available. So we're going to be starting with this. And then the other documentation I want to point you to is the, sorry, this is a pretty long documentation here, which is good. We want good documentation. So the other documentation here is in the PowerShell documentation, which demonstrates how to call a base class constructor. So when you are developing a custom PowerShell class and you're inheriting from another class, it's oftentimes good practice to call the constructor of the base class that you're inheriting, not just the constructor that you have implemented yourself. So understanding this syntax here is going to be uh, very important as we are developing our class. And I'll, I'll demonstrate why that's important to you in a moment here. So let's go ahead and switch over to Visual Studio Code. I've got VS Code installed here. I also can show you I've got the PowerShell extension installed right here. So make sure that you install the PowerShell extension because that's what's going to give you things like IntelliSense and syntax highlighting and code snippets and all that useful stuff. Uh, it's really important, especially when you're dealing with .NET, because it's just it's got such an extensive base class library. And sometimes, you know, you just remember a few characters of what you're searching for. You don't necessarily remember uh, everything exactly as it's typed out. So uh, the first thing we're going to start by doing is defining a class that inherits from system.exception, right? So we're just going to take that base class, inherit from it, and start there with our blueprint. 
So let's say that, for example, we're developing a, an application that retrieves a person or a user object from a database. And if for some reason the application requests details about a user that doesn't exist in the database, then we want to throw a special exception that's called person not found or user not found exception. So what we're going to do is literally just call this person not found exception. So that's going to be the name of our exception class. And then we're going to use a colon. And then after the colon is the base class that we want to inherit from. So we're going to inherit from system.exception and add our standard curly braces there. So now I've got this class. We can hit F5 to run that. And sure enough, it just it declares the class. We're not instantiating the class or anything at this point. But we have just created a class that inherits from system.exception. So now we, what we can do is explore that class a little bit. So we can just re retrieve the class definition. You can see I'm even getting IntelliSense there. And you know I could call the, um, not sure why I'm not getting IntelliSense there. But I can call the new method, and it's going to instantiate it. Um, so, so we've got a basic functioning class there, right? But what if we wanted to provide the application a some some useful information about the user that was attempted to be retrieved from the database. So what we could do is have a user ID property or a first name property or last name property. And these properties, we could set these at the application's runtime as the those parameters are being passed into the application and set them so that we know specifically what the user ID was. Maybe it's an integer or a GUID, just some kind of random identifier that unique, you know, uniquely identifies that user. And we could also see the person's first name and last name so that we could go maybe sift through the database and try to figure out what happened. Why wasn't this particular user found, right? So that's why we're creating this custom class instead of just using a standard exception. So. Let's go ahead and just run this. And sure enough, that works fine as well. We've declared a few custom properties on our exception class. But now you'll notice that we have this really generic looking message that says exception of type person not found exception was thrown, right? So that, that's a really generic error message. It's not really indicating to us as maybe an engineer, you know, what specifically happened. I mean, what does person not found actually mean? Right. Well, if we switch back to the documentation for the system.exception class, that is where that message property comes into play. So the message property gets a message that describes the current exception, right? And we have the opportunity to set that message in the exception constructor. So what we need to do is implement that constructor in our uh, child class of system.exception. And then we have to make sure that we call the base class, in this case, system.exception. We have to make sure that we explicitly in, uh, invoke the base class constructor with that signature, with that single string input. So the way that we declare a constructor on a class in PowerShell is to create a method that has no return type and the method has the same name as the class that it belongs to. So <clears throat> we're not declaring a return type, right? So we're not doing like void or something like that. So we're just calling it the class name. And then in parentheses here are our constructor parameters and then the constructor body. So what we need to do is create a constructor that takes a string message and so that's great and all. So if we hit F5 to run that, you'll see that we now do no longer have a default constructor. So by declaring a constructor that has a parameter, we have, in effect, eliminated the default constructor that's there if you don't declare any constructors. So if you want to keep the default constructor specifically, uh, you can just declare that yourself. And if we hit F5 to run that, that gets us back to a working state. But what we're not doing at this point, and I'll show you, uh, could not find the requested user in the database. So we're gonna we're gonna instantiate our class, and we're going to specifically tell it to use 
the constructor that takes a string as the message. So if we hit F5 on this, you'll see that we still get this really generic exception that says exception of type person not found exception was thrown. So it's still not useful. So why is that? Well, that's happening because our base, our child class is not invoking the constructor on the base class that actually sets the message property. So we've created a constructor that accepts a message parameter, but we haven't actually done anything with it. So what we have to do is call the base class and pass in message. So what this is going to do is going to take this constructor that takes a string and it's going to pass that string into the base class and that is going to in effect trigger this constructor on the system.exception base class. So now we are properly calling the base class constructor and if we hit F5 to run this, you'll now see that we get the message returned to us. So this is the message that we want to see when an exception of this type is thrown. So this is kind of the basic implementation of your custom exception class. And let's go ahead and just test this out now. So we've instantiated it manually, but we haven't actually set the custom properties on it yet. So I'll, I'll show you how that works. Uh, so I'm just going to do a function called get user. I'll give it the standard commandlet binding attribute and then its parameter block. And then I'll just do string first name, string last name. I'm just going to ignore the user ID for now. So just, just ignore that. And then, you know, I'm going to, you know, run some code here that effectively retrieves the user from the database. We're going to assume that whatever that code is, is going to fail. And so we're going to instantiate our custom exception class saying that that person couldn't be found. And then we're going to throw that exception to the caller of this get user function. And I'm just going to call this get Trevor user just so that we have a unique function name. I don't want to conflict with any other get user functions that might be installed on my system. So what we're going to do is go back to instantiating our class here. And then what we're going to do is say my error. So we're going to basically instantiate a new error and set the error to my error. And I'm sorry, we're going to set a, we're going to create a variable called my error. And we're, we're just going to temporarily capture this instance of the person not found exception. And then what we're going to do is before we throw the exception in the function, we're going to set the first name property of that exception class. And we're going to set the value to the first name parameter that the user uh, sent into this get Trevor user function. And then we're going to do the same thing with last name. We're going to set the last name property on our error class or exception class to the last name that the user passed into the function. So we're basically just adding some metadata to the exception so that uh, an engineer who's trying to debug the issue can identify specifically which user was affected. And then the last thing that we need to do is use the throw keyword in PowerShell to throw the exception object. So now if we call the get Trevor user command, pipe in a first name of, let's say Trevor, last name Sullivan, then you'll see that PowerShell properly threw this exception. And it says the exception message is could not find the requested user in the database. And if you're familiar with PowerShell error handling, the way that PowerShell handles errors is it, uh, it stores basically an error log and the zero index in the error array. So there's this built-in variable called error. And if you index into that array, the first item in that array is always going to be the most recent error message. So what we can do is just hit F8 on this line here and retrieve that error that was thrown previously. And we can take a look at the object using get member. 
And what you'll notice is that the error object itself is what's called a system.management.automation.error record. So that is basically a PowerShell object that wraps the exception itself. So when we ran get member, you might have expected to see our exception class, but PowerShell actually wraps them in this error record class. To get the actual exception that was thrown, you need to grab the exception property. So what we'll do is come back to our error here and specifically grab the exception property from that error record object. And if we hit F8 again, you'll now see that we have retrieved a person not found exception. And because it is a person not found exception, not just a generic system dot exception, we now have the first name property and the last name property, as well as the user ID, which we didn't set. So what we can do is just retrieve that exception and then do a, let's do select object property star. And that's basically going to tell PowerShell to inspect that exception object and grab the values of all the properties that were set on it. And it looks like it's not listed in here, but just to demonstrate, if I specifically tell it to retrieve the first name property. Okay, so I actually made a slight misstep here. We actually want to grab the next item. So actually the error that I really wanted to inspect here was the next item in the array here. So for some reason, it looks like my exception was overwritten with another exception. Um, I think I might have an automated script in the background that uh, perhaps did that. But if I take a look at the second item in the error array, you can now see that I can grab this first name property and it is set to Trevor. So that's just a demonstration of how to create a custom exception class, set some custom properties on it, and then throw that exception and provide more useful data inside of your PowerShell programs that help debug issues in the future. Uh, so I hope you like this video. If you did like it, please leave a thumbs up. That really helps encourage me to create more content like this. Uh, please subscribe to the channel as well and share this video with your friends on Twitter or Facebook or whatever your social media platform of choice is, maybe Reddit. Uh, and, and if you'd like to financially support this channel as well, that really, really helps encourage me to create more content in the future. Uh, I do have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash Trevor Sullivan. And also check out my website at trevorsullivan.net. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Cheers.